Welcome. This is my Solar Cycle 25 update for June of 2022. I've not done any videos for this particular update because we had a power outage at the Stanford campus, which meant we didn't get any SDO data in the middle of the month. Let's have a quick overview of the month. It was a very quiet month, somewhat surprisingly. The sunspot number was down from the record levels of May, but still was the fourth highest so far this cycle. That's out of 30 months. Given the sunspot number situation, the fact that there were more sunspot regions emerged during this month than any previous month during Solar Cycle 25 is somewhat surprising. However, most of these regions were relatively small and short lived, so they didn't contribute very much to the total sunspot numbers. As a result of this quiet level of activity, we had fewer flares, fewer coronal mass ejections, and geomagnetic storms. Well, let's take a closer look at the sunspot numbers. This is the sunspot number by day throughout the month, according to the Solar uh, Influence Data Center in Belgium. You can see the sunspot number was highly variable. The average for the month was 76. As I say, that was the fourth highest so far this cycle. The highest level was 164, which I think, if I remember correctly, was the second highest we've had so far this cycle. But we had a low of zero on the 8th of June. That was the first spotless day in 2022. And people have been making a big fuss about that. And it turns out all of that fuss was to nothing. Let me show you why. The 8th of June was the spotless day that wasn't. Here's a picture taken early on June 8th. And you can see in the right hand corner of this image, there's a little group of sunspots. That was actually there the day before and also there the day after. So the sun, by definition, even with these little spots, was not spotless. However, just a little later in the day, this started to develop. There was the original group still there, but now we have this new group growing very, very rapidly. And some of those spots are quite large and have penumbras. So this certainly wasn't a spotless day. Lots of people have been making a big fuss about this spotless day. Uh, including Grand Solar Minimum News, which usually gets the wrong end of the stick every time. Here is the finalized data from the Solar Influences Data Center. And you notice that June 8th is no longer zero. What they don't realize when they start counting these spotless days is that spotless days are very open to interpretation, depends where you are in the world and what the sun is doing at the time. You have to wait for the revised numbers to come out at the end of the month. And if you've done that, there would be no spotless days. Now, given it was in fact a low period, but not necessarily spotless. Let's take a look at the figures for June in the context of the last solar cycle. Here we have plots of sunspot numbers on three different bases. The yellow is the daily sunspot number. You can see they vary tremendously. The blue is the monthly average sunspot number, which is the one that we mainly work with. And then the one that actually determines when solar maximum is and solar minimum is, is the monthly smooth sunspot number where you smooth over 13 months to get the actual minimum. The smooth sunspot number actually increased last month to 56. So we're still on an upward trajectory. As I said before, the number of sunspot regions that emerged, these are ones that just had sunspots, not necessarily numbered sunspot regions, were more than has happened any time during the solar cycle 25 so far. And that's with that data gap in the middle of June. You'll notice that down the bottom there within that red circle, there is a little blue square. That was a rogue region. And it was interesting, it was reverse polarity. So I'm counting it as a, a solar cycle 24 region. Though other people are calling it other things. So let's take a look at that in a bit more detail. Certainly, this was an odd region. You can see it here, right in the middle of the sun, basically on the equator. In fact, it was just slightly north. When you look at the polarity of its magnetic field, it had negative polarity leading. And for a northern hemisphere region, that should be positive. So this is a reverse polarity region. So what should we make of this? It was a large spot. It was reverse polarity and it was near the equator. It gives us three possibilities. It was a remnant of solar cycle 24, but it's large and very late. 
the last remnant region that we saw was eight months ago. Some think it might be a solar cycle 26 region harboring the beginning of solar cycle 26 and the end of solar cycle 25. Mm. That is blatant nonsense because one, it's not at high latitude. It's very early. The first solar cycle 25 region we saw was in December 2016. That's eight years after minimum, and we're only two and a half years after minimum at the moment. It could be just a random mixed up spot, but again, it's near the equator. And if it's uh, one of the current series that just got turned around somehow by the internal dynamics of the sun, you would expect it to be in the same latitude bands as the rest of the regions, and it isn't. So my guess is that it is indeed a remnant of solar cycle 24, uh, and so not to make very much fuss of it. We still hear a lot of nonsense about the fact that solar cycle 25 is weak and uh, underperforming compared with solar cycle 24. That is incorrect. Here we have two of the major solar activity indicators for solar cycle 25. The blue is the data and the red is the forecast. If you look at the sunspot numbers, which is the top plot, you see that the solar cycle 25 is outperforming the model of solar cycle 25 by about 56%. That's a huge variation. And if that were translated to the maximum value, we'd have something around about 180. At the bottom here, we have the 10.7 centimeter radio flux, another good indicator of what's going on. And this one is outperforming the model by 86%. So yes, solar cycle 25 is outperforming solar cycle 24 and the models that people have made of solar cycle 25 before it started. Even though we had fewer flares than expected in June, overall solar cycle 25 so far is outperforming solar cycle 24 by over 100% in terms of flares. We've made this so we could compare the two uh, cycles by lining up the dates of their minimum. One is in January 2009 and the other is in January 2020. Or at least that's the start of the cycle. The minimum was the month before that. And you can see the orange curve here, which is solar cycle 25, is way ahead of solar cycle 24. The same story applies to coronal mass ejections as seen by the SOHO spacecraft. Again, we've aligned the time axes to make the two minima co coincide. You can see that the orange curve, solar cycle 25, is well ahead of solar cycle 24, the blue curve. But this time it's only 23%, but even that is fairly impressive. I believe there's a great deal of information to be gained from comparing the activity levels in the northern and southern hemispheres. So what I've got here is the monthly average sunspot number from the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium plotted by hemisphere. Blue indicates the north, orange indicates the south. So far the average monthly sunspot number for the northern hemisphere is 13.3 and in the southern hemisphere it's 16.8. That means the south is outshining the north by about 27% which is quite a significant difference. Although I should point out the last few months, the North has been catching up. There is another aspect of the North and South comparison, and that's the polar regions. The polar holes are still there. And why is that important? Well, if you look at past solar cycles, if you compare the dates of maximum with the polarity of the polar regions, you see that that the times of maximum, the polar regions are weak or weaker or are in the process of reversing. So you'd expect the polar regions to be almost non-visible. At the moment, they're quite healthy and visible when you look for them. So from that point of view, it indicates we're still a long way to go before we get to solar maximum. And I'm estimating two to four years. Well, what can we conclude from all of this? Well, first of all, the data gap in the SDO data uh, made it very difficult to interpret the data from this month. So we don't want any more data gaps. 
Solar Cycle 25 is still easily outpacing Solar Cycle 24 and predictions for Solar Cycle 25. The Southern Hemisphere is the most active so far with 57% of the sunspot numbers produced for this cycle. Thank you for watching the video and if you know somebody who is interested in this sort of stuff, please pass on the link to it. And so until next time, stay safe and goodbye.